Hello, my name is Henry Snape. Um, my research group is based in the physics department of the Oxford University. Um, my research groups primarily focus with photovoltaic devices. Um, our activities range from um, synthesizing new materials, optimizing devices, and then characterizing them, and um, a little bit of spectroscopy and um, sort of more fundamental investigations as well. So why are we interested in photovoltaics? Well, we know that we need to create a new, cleaner source of energy than burning fossil fuels. Um, solar energy is arguably the most abundant source on planet Earth, and that we can convert it directly to electricity in photovoltaic devices. So that's the motivation behind our research. Now, existing photovoltaics are based on crystalline silicon. They work very well. The efficiency of the modules is approaching 20%. And this means you can generate a lot of power, more than, more than enough power than we need. But the problem is the power, the cost of producing power from conventional photovoltaics is still a lot more than that of producing power from burning fossil fuels. So this disparity or the, the cost of conventional PV has led to a massive booming field of research trying to develop new materials, new processing methods of new photovoltaics. We can really class photovoltaics into two classes. One that are based on very pure but expensive materials that are extremely efficient, and one that are based on more amorphous materials that are less efficient but fundamentally cheaper. Um, historically, there's been this divide, and the materials that are cheap and easy to process have really had fundamental efficiency limits that's made them uncompetitive on performance with the best materials. Very recently, over the last year or two, um, the emergence of organometallic metal halide perovskites has occurred, and this has really been a paradigm shift, because these materials are extremely inexpensive, they're processed by many means through, through low-cost processing, and they promise to reach the highest efficiencies. So this is really is going to enable a new era in photovoltaics research and eventually deployment of extremely inexpensive solar cells. So perovskites are a large family of materials which all share the crystal structure with calcium titanate and have the general formula ABX3. The semiconducting perovskites have been known for several decades but were largely overlooked for solar cell applications until quite recently. Most of the early work on devices was carried out in the 90s where it emerged that a family of inorganic organic hybrid perovskites were solution processable and their optical properties were tunable by varying the size of the organic component. And then after this important work, the first solar cell um, devices emerged in the middle of the last decade based on the dye-sensitized solar cell device architecture. In a traditional dye-sensitized solar cell architecture, the dye is adsorbed onto a misoporous metaoxide titania electrode. The electron is injected into the titania and transported to the transparent anode, fluorinated tin oxide or FTO. Meanwhile, the hole is transported through the liquid hole transporter to the cathode. Early attempts using perovskites in these solar cells were unstable due to degradation caused by the liquid electrolyte. To prevent this problem, the liquid electrolyte was replaced with a solid state organic hole transporter, spiroomatad. The first high performance solar cells using perovskites used exactly this architecture, where the dye is simply replaced with the perovskite. Using a methyl ammonium lead halide perovskite, efficiencies up to 9% were achieved. However, it turns out the perovskite shell itself transports charge remarkably well. Our group showed that you could replace the mesoporous titania with an insulating aluminous scaffold and achieve efficiencies up to 11%. In particular, the open circuit voltages were dramatically improved to 1.1 volts, despite the low band gap of 1.55 electron volts, demonstrating that this truly is a low loss system. When we tried to optimize the thickness of the alumina scaffold, we found that if we remove the scaffold altogether, we can still make devices with very high charge collection efficiencies. These devices now have a conventional thin film NIP type planar junction structure where the perovskite absorber is several hundred nanometers thick. This raises two possibilities for the creation of free carriers in the solar cell. Either light absorption by the perovskite directly creates free carriers, or light absorption creates excitons which are able to diffuse for several hundred nanometers of the perovskite absorber. There are many pressing challenges facing this emerging community. What are the trap densities, the doping densities, the mobilities, the mechanism for free carrier generation? Answering these important questions will allow us to further improve device performance in order to achieve the full potential of these exciting materials. 
Over the next few years, we can expect to see efficiencies over 20% and also see the use of perovskites as top cells in multi-junction devices based on currently commercially available technologies. As you've seen, over the last two years, there's been a tremendous transformation in the field of emerging PV research with the, the emergence of these metal organohalide um, perovskite absorbers. The solar cells have rapidly increased in efficiency and there's many more new breakthroughs to come. So over the next few years, we're bound to see the emergence of a very exciting and very inexpensive photovoltaic technology.